Taking codin kiki buckets, I am alive. Plenty people taking mamba cotto sockets, I am alive. Plenty people taking squishy cotto sockets. Today, 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 na my by the Taking Kobin Kiki buckets, I am alive. Plenty people taking Mamba Cotto sockets, I am alive. Plenty people taking Squishy Cotto sockets, I am alive. It's my bide, oh, 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 and I'm happy, oh, 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 for the life and the hope I see. <laughs> A very warm welcome to each and every one of us. Let me say compliments of the season and welcome back from the long Christmas and New Year holidays. This is the season's greeting. It is also a start to say a very good afternoon to those across Nigeria. Good morning and a good evening to those joining us from other parts of the world, be you in Europe, America, Asia, Middle East, and the rest of Africa. This is NDLA's Open Forum on X Space, and we are live from the National Headquarters of Nigeria's premier anti narcotic agency, NDLA, located in the nation's federal capital territory, FCT Abuja. Here on this platform, we share information, knowledge, and raise awareness about substance abuse and its devastating impact on human lives, public health, and our environment. This platform also serves as a channel of providing help to those struggling with substance abuse who need treatment, who need counseling, who need support. It is equally a means to update you about all the activities of the agency in the area of arrest, in the area of seizures, prosecution, and all other related matters. Especially what we're doing to curb the scourge of substance abuse and illicit drug trafficking, as well as getting your feedback um, so that we can continue to improve on all that we do in service all to serve the society and humanity. This conversation we'd like to tell you is recorded and is streamed live on our other social media handles at NDLA01 on Facebook and at NDLA underscore Nigeria on YouTube. You can always go back, take a listen to the recording and also share with others so that we can spread the good news or the information or facts about substance abuse and illicit drugs to the benefit of um, all and sundry. Before um, I've seen him in the house, I'm sure um, he will take um, his seat right um, uh, at the appropriate place in a short while from now. But before I invite him to make his presentation, he will be speaking with us today on this all-important um, topic, understanding the chemistry of new psychoactive substances and effects on human health. For those who have been uh, following developments in the media or some conversations out there in public spaces, you would have um, 
listened or watched um, on TV or even um, on the newspapers and even on social media uh, platforms, discussions or conversations about um, some of the new uh, psychoactive substances that are being abused by uh, people, especially the young ones all across the country, whether the ones in Bonu, the ones in Lagos, Oyo, Enugu, Anabra, Portacot, Bayesa, all over the country, you have um, these incidences. And um, what we need to do is to continue to educate and raise awareness about these issues and um, bring also to the pub, I mean, to the knowledge of those who um, are involved in this or those who may likely or who have been enticed or been lured to also get involved in this to know what um, they are going into or what they are into and the dangers, the consequences that await such um, development, such actions. But then before we get to that point, I'm sure um, we have somebody who is well competent, very competent in that regard. Um, it's something he's been doing, educating and raising um awareness about um, some of these things. He's actually been with us on this platform before and he's done, um, given a very good account of himself um, that's um, a guest speaker today. I think we had him last um, June 2023. That's um, well over seven months now uh, to discuss um, that was uh, the raging issue there was the laughing gas thing and um, Dr. Olushina Ajida, hmm, popularly called the bearded Dr. Shina, was with us. And uh, we're glad um, we have him also today to discuss um, this uh, very important um, topic. But before we get to him, before we invite him to make his presentation, let's um, remind you of some of the activities of the agency in the past week. And that will come in our news highlight segment, which will be taken by a regular OAP blessing Tafa. but before then um okay let's uh, let's have blessing blessing okay let's have what you have for us um this week please go ahead and let's get your of this thank you yeah it's blessing there Thank you, sir. Good day to everyone, and thank you for joining us on this week's X Space. My name is Blessing Tarfa, and here are the NDLEA news highlights for the week. NDLEA intercepts colors consignment in boxing kits on New Year Day. Arrest female bandit supplier with cash of ammunition. Eleven others over three tons of illicit drugs in raids across Kaduna, Lagos, Niger, Kogi, Kano, Borno, Oshun. Operators of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, at the Mutala Mohamed International Airport, MMIA, Ikeja, Lagos, on New Year Day, Monday, 1st January 2024, intercepted a consignment of Colorado, a very strong strain of cannabis concealed in boxing kits imported from the United States of America. A week-long intelligence-led operation to get the receiver arrested was consummated on Saturday, 6 January, following the successful tracking and arrest of 38-year-old Olorufumi Shahid Olakunle, who distributes the dangerous psychoactive substance to dealers across Lagos State. The consignment had arrived in the country on Monday, 1st January, via Cairo, on an Egypt Airlines flight marked as boxing kits. According to Saheed, he delivers such consignments to different recipients whenever his childhood friend, U.S.-based Sagir Salami, sends them. The latest shipment has a total weight of 1.80 kilograms. Meanwhile, a 28-year-old female supplier of ammunition to bandits, Bilkisu Suleiman, came top on the list of 12 other suspects arrested by NDLEA operatives in nuclear in interdiction operations in Kaduna, Lagos, Niger, Kogi, Kano, Borno, and Ocean States. Bilkisu was arrested on Wednesday, 3rd January by NDLEA officers on patrol along Zaria Kano Expressway in possession of 249 rounds of 7.6 millimeters live ammunition concealed in a black nylon bag kept in her lady's handbag. 
She was on her way to deliver the ammunition to an unidentified bandit in Kakumi village, Katsina State, when she was nabbed, after which she was transferred to the Kaduna State Command of the Nigeria Police Force for further investigation. The military authorities at the Boni Camp Cantonment in Lagos on Tuesday, 2nd January, transferred a suspect, Francis Suru 37, and 63 jumbo bags of Ghana Loud, a strain of cannabis, weighing 2,104.2 kilograms, and a truck to the Lagos State Command of NDLEA. The suspect and the drug exhibits were earlier intercepted by NDLA officers on 12 December 2023, close to the gate of the military cantonment in Boni Camp, Victoria Island. Some armed escorts, however, resorted to sporadic shooting to obstruct the operation, a development which attracted soldiers from the cantonment who eventually intervened and took custody of the consignment as suspect before transferring them to the agency. In the same vein, NDLA operatives in Niger State on Thursday, 5th January, during a stop and search operation along Suleja Kaduna Road, intercepted a J5 bus coming from Ondo State to Zaria Kaduna State with 23 bags of cannabis sativa weighing 219.5 kilograms. Two suspects, Omar Musa, 26, and Isachiru Abubakar, were arrested in connection with the seizure. While a female drug trafficker, Queen Onyema, 27, was arrested on Saturday, 6 January, in a commercial bus en route Abuja along Okene Lokaja Expressway with 12 compressed blocks of cannabis weighing 4.6 kilograms and 0.046 kilograms designer drugs concealed in an Indomie carton. Another suspect, Mubarak Sani, 20, was nabbed at Gadar Tamburawa area of Kano on Monday, 1st January, with 445.9 kilograms of the same psychoactive substance. In Borno, four suspects, Zedna Alhaji Dala, 32, Musa Umar, 21, Moshe Ibrahim, 23, and Shehu Idris, 19, were arrested at Pomfomari Bypass area of the state with 60 kilograms cannabis. Also in Oshun, NDLA operatives on patrol along Oksha Bor Day Omo Road on New Year Day, Monday, 1st January, intercepted a consignment of illicit drugs sent through Waybill from Lagos to Oshogbo. A follow-up operation led to the arrest of Ibrahim Olawole, 43. The drugs recovered include cannabis sativa, 10.8 kilograms, loud, 150 grams, Colorado, 19 grams, molly, 5 grams, totaling 10.947 kilograms. A digital steel, 18,000 naira monetary exhibit, and customized wrapping papers for Colorado were also seized. Commending the arrests and seizures of the past week by officers and men of the MMIA, Lagos, Niger, Kogi, Kano, Borno, and Oshun Commands, Chairman Chief Executive Officer of the NDLEA, Brigadier General Mohamed Bubamarwa retired, charged them and their compatriots across all formations of the agency to continue to remain vigilant and double their drug demand reduction as well as drug supply reduction efforts in the new year. That's it on arrest and seizures. Now, here are the water activities across the country for the week. The NDLEA achieves its goal of reducing drug demand in part through the War Against Drug Abuse Advocacy Initiative, which is tailored to increase the collective responsibility of society and leaders in protecting their community from drug use. This week, advocacy visits and lectures were delivered in schools, religious gatherings, communities, and at youth events. On Wednesday, 3rd January 2024, the Katsina State Command facilitated a water sensitization lecture at Nuru Huda Community Islamic School, Ferinyaro, Katsina State. On Friday, 5th January, the Kano State Command paid a water advocacy visit to the Emir of Gaya, Al Haji Ali Ibrahim Gaya, where the command solicited for the support of the Emir and sensitized his subjects on dangers of substance abuse. The Bono State Command also on Friday delivered a water advocacy lecture at the annual camping for members of first aid group of Jama'atul Izalatul Bidia Wekamatu Sunnah Jibwes held at Ajilari Community School Gomari Medugri. Concluding the water advocacy visits for the week was a semi special area command on Saturday, 6 January, with a water sensitization lecture at the 2024 OKR4 OK Youth Day, Olorunda LCD in Lagos. That's the update for this week. My name is Blessing, and I hand you over to our host, Mr. Femi Baba Femi. Thank you very much, dear. Uh, blessing our own AOP on this platform. Welcome back to from the news um, 
highlight segments. Now let's remind ourselves about some of the rules guiding our process of engagement on this uh, program. Please note that when we approve you to be on the speaker's corner, um, ensure that you remain muted until after our guest presentation. I will start inviting individuals to unmute themselves to ask questions and make contributions in a few seconds. Please, in a few seconds. Please note that this should be done in a few seconds so that um, we can um, go around as many as possible. Uh, also note that we don't encourage unauthorized interruption. We don't discuss policies here on this platform. So let us stick to the rules so that we can all enjoy and benefit from the conversation, especially uh, the kind of um, issue or subject matter we're talking or we're discussing today. This is something that uh, we did really need to understand um, quite a lot of things about it, um, get ourselves well, um, well briefed, and we can spread um, the information, the facts. We can share all of this with um, uh, quite a lot of other people, especially our young people, so that they are not um, misguided or uh, wrongly influenced by their peers out there. So let's stick to the rules so that um, we can enjoy the conversation. Thanks for your usual cooperation. Now, to make today's program as interactive as much as possible, uh, we are committed to responding to all your questions and take your contributions on today's subject of discussion. So please stay calm and let's enjoy the conversation on today's subject matter. This is all part of our commitment to engage with all our stakeholders in all we do. Why, um, let me just quickly take some moments to um, take um, to talk about um, the NDLA's um, call center before I formally introduce our guest today who is already seated um, with the mic set in front of him just to unmute himself and hit the ground running. But then before we get to that, let's quickly talk about the NDLA call center. This um, was an initiative um, that the leadership of the agency to uh, bridge the gap between uh, struggling with substance abuse and um, the much needed support or assistance or help that they need. Uh, here at the center, we have um, quite a lot of um, professionals, mental health experts, uh, talking of uh, counselors, um, talking of um, psychologists and uh, psychotherapists, even up to uh, consultant and psychiatrists, um, psychiatric doctors. We have all of them uh, working 24 seven. Uh, when I talk of 24 seven, I'm talking of 24-7. They indeed run shifts and um, always ready to take calls from um, our people out there. So wherever you may be in any part of the country, be, it, be you in the northeast, north central, northwest, or south, south, southeast, and southwest of Nigeria, please feel free. All you need is just um, a call to our toll-free helpline. I emphasize the line free help, not paying for the call. So that also makes it um, um, very important for us that we really don't really do have um, any excuse not to seek the needed help. And the helpline is, um, please know that it's a 12-digit um, helpline, so it's not like the regular GSM number. Um, so it's a toll-free helpline, and the number is 0800-1020-3040. I come with the number again. The number, a toll-free helpline, for those who um, who need help and who wants to be guided, who wants to be supported, who needs counseling and all of those, either directly or their relations, their friends, family members, please feel free to call our toll-free helpline 0800-1020-3040. It's a very direct and um, easy to remember number. Please, let's get help. There we have um, all our... Uh, um, professionals, mental health experts and um, professionals in this field to guide you, to support you and um, lead you to uh, recovery. Uh, beyond that, again, we also like to let you know that um, at the center where you make a call, um, there is no, the center is indeed language friendly, meaning that um, if you cannot speak or seek the help um, while talking on the line, if you cannot seek help in English, if you cannot communicate in English 
Or Pidgin English, you can also speak any of the three major uh, Nigerian languages. Uh, experts there can speak to you in any of the three major um, languages. That is um, Hausa, Yoruba, Igbo. Uh, experts will talk to you on any of those languages. So that's also um, a further step to ensure that nobody has an excuse not to get help. Indeed, if you have someone at home or you have uh, you are the person struggling with substance abuse please feel free to get the needed help we have quite a lot of our people already let me first of all um acknowledge one of our experts on this platform who has always been who is someone also very committed to um this um, service to humanity and um I'm talking of um, Dr. Abdullah. Dr. Abdullah is a consultant psychiatrist at the um, Abadu Bello University Teaching Hospital uh, in Zaria. There, would like to acknowledge your presence, uh, Dr. Abdullah. I'm sure Dr. Abdullah, at the right time, will be moving um, to the right place to contribute to be a part of the conversation today. He's always very regular and very supportive thank you very much there dr abdullah okay now let's quickly come to our guest for today and that is um, dr olushina ajida whom popularly known as the bearded dr shina on social media where he uses his handles to create a lot of awareness on public health Dr. Olushina Ajida, who is an award-winning medical practitioner who graduated from the University of Ibadan in New York State with distinction. When somebody graduates with distinction in the field of medicine, then you know that um, that's not, uh, it's no mean feat. So we give it to Dr. Shina. There is someone that we have monitored and followed closely his activities um, on social media space. Uh, indeed, um, we refer to him as a public health advocate because he's very sad and he has um, been using his um, knowledge and God-given um, understanding of these issues to educate quite a lot of our young people on social media space and the general public uh, at large. He has interest in research and public health awareness. Um, he also sits on the board of uh, some health tech companies. He is the current chief executive officer of Labs, a digital tech startup with sub subsidiaries as um, Custodia Health and Priv Health. He has worked with both local and international multi, um, and international organizations. He is a health influencer, has used his various, uh, like I said before, various media platforms to educate and host the public via health sessions, health tweets, news and updates, especially on drug abuse, uh, which attracted the NDLA to his activities on Twitter, uh, now known as X. He has talks on both national and international platforms, including um, within and outside um, the country. On social media, he is um, very passionate about health awareness and uses his platform, <coughs> excuse me, to create um, health awareness. Please join me in welcoming the bearded Dr. Shina as I invite him to unmute himself while we listen to him uh, discuss understanding the chemistry of new psychoactive substances and effects on human health for the next 30 to 40 minutes. Thereafter, we would uh, be discussing um, his presentation, asking questions, and sharing ideas. Please go ahead, Dr. Shino. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, am I very audible? Just a quick mic check. You are very loud and clear. Okay, thank you very much, sir, and thank you um, for giving me this opportunity as a young person who is also concerned about the menings of drugs in Nigeria and the whole world entirely to talk about this um, topic. And I'm very, very happy that we're having this conversation because I think it's high time in, uh, at this point we actually, um, you know, talk about this now. Before I start and introduce this topic, I'm sure, but in last week when there was a viral video that actually went around where some people were like inhaling some funny substances, and I mean, the video sparked a lot of controversy that what exactly are they doing? I mean, are they getting high? Are they sniffing bones? Are they sniffing dead bodies? Are they sniffing...
It starts from the foundation. Everybody needs somebody. You turn a blind eye, care nothing less. Say it's just business, all about the money. You are so on board as long as they pay. Say it's just business, all about the money. I was the head boy in my primary therapy. I spent three months in therapy. I spent eight months. It's easy to relapse, but your mind has to be stronger than the craving. Drugs are does not love you. You are not the one using drugs. Drugs are the one using you. Say no to drug abuse. All right, we'd like to apologize for that uh, glitch. Um, this uh, is one of the um, circumstances um, who, I mean, that really be beyond can handle or control. Uh, from, you know, we all know that we've been struggling. Up. Um, I did tell my team, uh, uh, earlier today, that we have this especially on the, our first start of the year, but then uh, I can see they are already telling me it's um, it's just something beyond uh, what uh, we control here. But then we'll take it in good faith and continue with the conversation. Again, we'd like to apologize to. I guess Dr. Shino, um, that um, I'm sure he also understands how some of these things uh, work. Dr. Shino, please uh, go ahead. Let's um, listen to you. Thank you. Right, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I'll just reiterate the last statement I made about the, the viral video that went around that really sparked um, what people were thinking. Like, were those boys sniffing like a toilet? Were they sniffing dead bodies and all of that? Now, just let, the first thing is to understand that what exactly is NPS? Because a lot of people will actually ask me, are we saying there are new um, psychoactive substances? So let me define according to the United Nations Office on Drug and Crime. Now, new psychoactive substances are actually substances of abuse that either, I mean, this definition is very, very important because it's going to shape everything I'm going to talk about. They are defined as substances of abuse either in a pure form, one, or preparation that are not controlled. Now we know we have a, a convention of um, a, a convention on narcotic drugs that was stipulated in um, 1961 that uh, um, that stipulated oh these are the drugs, but these drugs um, pose a public health threat. Now the fact that we use the word new does not mean these drugs are these things are actually new inventions. I mean some of these things have been around for a long time. It's just that, just like human beings, human beings have found a way to experiment with these drugs. And have recently, um, some of them have well been reintroduced because some of these substances have actually been banned at some point, but some are actually finding their ways um, back into the market. Now, if you want, uh, if you want to uh, talk about the NPS, if it would be good, we classify them. But just to give some statistics, as at, as at November, 2023, um, I, I found out that the, uh, the office had, stip had said that there are over 1,230 NPS. Obviously, we know that not all of them are very, very common. And this global maintenance of NPS is actually something that is being battled by over 141 countries. So it is not only in Nigeria. This thing, the NPS, is actually a very is a big global um, thing, and why is it very very important is because 
just like every hard drug, these drugs are, are actually very, very, very dangerous to the system, which I'm going to major on. I'm going to remind, I'm just going to talk a little bit about their street names. I'll classify them briefly, but I will really, really major on the health effect because that is what I want people to really take away because they are very scary, they are dangerous, and they are unhealthy. Now, if you want to um, classify them, depending on how you look at them, if you want to go the big way, the big four ways that you can classify them into synthetic cannabinoids. You can also have synthetic opioid. You have some that are hallucinogens. Now, when you say hallucinogens, now these are substances that can make from from the name hallucinogen. They can make one hallucinate. And uh, you can also you have another class we call synthetic dissociatives. Now, these are drugs that um, you know they kind of cause what we call dissociative amnesia. I'm still going to um, talk about that. Then the opioids, which I are laid to so these are like the various various classes now if you want to then go bigger 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 let's just just to break down more which is if you are a young person that you know you attend parties and all of that i'm sure you you have met some of these um street names while did you so still classify we have some of them are like uh, stimulants some of them are hypnotics and all of them so it's a whole big 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 class of them and just to make some worthy um, some worthy mention because um, I'm sure there are like young people here, so I'm just going to mention some of them that actually are like very, very, very popular. And just to mention it, I think in the context of Nigeria, we might need to start using the word newer. But I mean, the word we are using now is new psychoactive substances. I think we are going to have to start using the word newer psychoactive substances because now, the uh, if you, I think it was like I can't remember when it was in the news that in a part of Nigeria. Some people, you know, actually sniff like dead lizards. They sniff um, toilets. They sniff all of that to get high. Yes, those things are happening because I've seen a few cases before. Some people sniff gum. People sniff glue. People, all of those things to get high. So that's why I'm saying we might have to label our own in Nigeria as newer because obviously criteria like this would never expect that it will get to a point where people will start sniffing dead dead animals, start sniffing dirty toilets to get high. But now it has gotten to that, I will still talk about what exactly is um, the rationale um, behind that. So let's just talk about some popular one. Now, a very, very popular one is, I mean, if you watch movies and if you are very, very, like, very active in the club fronts of say place like Lagos and all of that. You hear the name of things we call like pink champagne, um, pink gold. I mean, it's one of those MPS. So um, at any time I say MPS, just let's take it as new psychoactive substances. And I've I've spent time creating that context. And and as amino, it's one one of the popular ones. Is, is, is the amino in name, but it goes by the name of pink champagne, street goat, and all of that. Another one that I think popularly is actually coming a, a, around is um, um, one phenocyclidin. It's, I, I think I've seen that before. I think we've had um, an admission before where we were wondering, you know, I mean, what did this person actually take and all of that. And the saving grace was actually an empty bottle. And um, that gave it that. But people also experiment to think like benzodiazepines. One of the common ones is lexothin. I mean, people take um, some of these are sleeping pills, but we know that people now experiment to abuse them. And um, many of these things have street, um, street, street, street common name. And, and I think that the use of many of these um, names, if you listen to music, especially Nigerian music very well, you will actually find them um, used in the in the in the music industry because I mean the music industry promotes a lot of things. Now the synthetic cannabinoids, which is I think that one is like very very much obtainable. Um, I'll, I'll just read some of the funny funny name it goes by. Some of us will know the one they call Skunk, um, Mr. Smith, Black Mamba. It's also called Spice Gold, Spike Silver, K2. So it's actually the same thing for all of that. They are all just um, synthetic things. Um, they have been made to like mimic what cannabis can do. And um, well, I, I, I will still come to the side effect of that and where the danger is. And even like, well, it's not really, really common in Nigeria, but I think I've seen like one or two is something called synthetic caffeine. So um, they also are like substances, like some of them are used for bathing, some of them are used for plant foods. And trust me, people are now experimenting with them by either sniffing and all of that. Now, some of these drugs, People also even inject them, and it's not an unusual finding to find um, IV drug abusers coming to the hospitals with this. Uh, well, 
I'm not going to mention so much on this, but I'm sure we all know about this synthetic opioids. The common one is tramadol. I once tweeted on Twitter that um, tramadol is meant to be an over the, uh, it's, it's not meant to be an over the counter drug. It's something that is well controlled. And somebody will just reply to me that, doctor, on the streets, you can get trams for 100 naira. I'm like, what? Something that is so closely um, regulated. How is it possible? How does Tramadol find its way into the, 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 the streets and you can actually get it for 100 naira? Um, other ones, fentanyl, methadone, these are all of that. I don't want to go into the integrity of that. And there, we, and for some reason also, amphetamines, uh, it's something that is actually um, coming, you know, uh, uh, coming. And finding his way popularly on the street now. So let's not go to the danger. I mean, I'm a medical practitioner, and I and I see some of these cases. So I think it's good to actually like talk about some of the um uh, some of the dangers of this drug. Now, many of these drugs have um you know the way the way drugs work in the body is that when you take a drug, you have what you call receptors in the body, whether in the brain, in your organs, wherever this drug are going to act. And something is that when you're taking something like a drug, the liver is involved in metabolizing the drug, and your the kidney is also um, involved in excretion. And obviously, since many of them, you know, also whether act at the level of the brain to either cause excitation or reduce the um, level of brain stimulation. So a lot of them also actually affect the brain. Now, one big thing go, that, uh, that a lot of these drugs cause is seizures. Now, some of them can cause seizures. And um, some of the seizures, some of the cases we've had, you can just have, you know, young people, you know, they go to a party and they just, well, try to experiment on something. And next thing, uh, the person just collapses, foaming from the mouth. And you know, if you're in Nigeria or something, you have seen they have put spoon in the person's mouth and then they rush the person to the hospital. Then we do a drug toxicology screening. So, yeah, seizures are very common one. Psychosis. Now, many of these drugs, one of the dangers they have to discern, they distort reality. Now, psychosis has to do with, when we say psychosis in, in medicine, it has to do with hallucination, delusion. So you can have many of these things can give people a false feeling of reality. They are seeing what is not there. They are hearing voices. They are doing other. It's just like messes up the mental... Um, mental milieu a lot of of this mps also we know are, are associated with heart heart problems so some of them that mimic amphetamines some of them can actually cause heart attacks yes we've actually seen cases like that especially when you have some of these people that are use adulterated cocaine so there is a form of um, cocaine that also made its way into the streets where they call it crack but i i, I was interacted with someone that what exactly is this crack that you people are selling and then the, the word goes like it's not just it's not just real cocaine actually it's like cocaine mixed with a lot with a, with with a, with a lot of stuff. Now a very very important one that is, is dangerous concerning this MPS is that it actually increases the risk of diseases like HIV. Now remember I mentioned that um, many people inject some of these drugs also, so it, it, it's, it's not unusual to find them, um, you know, sharing needles. And you know that HIV, IV drug abuse, is one of the way like, HIV is spread. Another thing is brain damage. Now, let me come to the issue of the people that were the the north, the cases of the northerners that they, they found that they were smoking, sorry, they were sniffing dead, um, dead lizards and dead oil animals. Now, not, we know that when an animal dies, it decomposes. Now, it releases a toxic gas called ammonia. Now, when one inhales ammonia, ammonia is a gas that is unpleasant at every level. Like, if you if you go to a chemistry lab and you smell ammonia, you're probably going to, um, you know, run away because the smell is not pleasant. But one thing is, and the smell of ammonia is very, like, sharp and pungent. Apart from the fact that it can cause, um, it can actually cause irritation, it can also, so these people uh, are, are likely to have, they can also have airway damage. So ammonia can also damage the airways. It can also damage the brain. That's something that is also very important, which is why we need to talk about it. Because if we are having young people who are saying, oh, I cannot get cannabis, I cannot get, um, I cannot get, um, Tramadol, what I do, let me go and kill a lizard or kill a chicken, bury it, there are a few days time, I'm going to come back and inhale it. Then, we have a problem. Another very important one um, why MPSs are a big 
threat we should talk about is because many of them can also i'm, I'm trying not to uh, because i don't want it to be too medical many of them can actually cause what we call arrhythmias now arrhythmias are like abnormalities in the electrical functioning of the heart now believe you me some arrhythmias can be deadly there are some drugs that can predispose one to have an arrhythmia if the person does not get to a hospital on time the person can actually die. For a country like Nigeria, where we don't have um, a 24-7 ambulance where you can collapse here and we want to rush you to a hospital, now imagine one developing an arrhythmia from an overdose of an MPS. Um, well, some um, common side effects that might not really be very fatal, we can find in people, you know, um, fast heartbeat, raising heartbeats, and headaches, vomiting, and all of that. And what I've mentioned, psychosis, hallucination, we go on with that. Another very important one is increases of incidence of stroke. Now, one thing we know is that people abuse and use of MPS actually also, I mentioned that it can affect the brain. The brain is one of those, the organs that, um, uh, many of these MPS acts and things that are amphetamine like now. The way they can do is they can, in what we call vasoconstrict blood vessels. Vasoconstriction is like imagine obstructing blood vessels. So it's like it blocks the flow of blood to the brain, and the brain is one part of the body that requires, like, it needs blood, it needs that oxygen. And once that blood is cut off, that part of the brain dies off, and that's what we call a stroke. Many of some of these drugs, especially the synthetic opioids like tramadol, can cause respiratory problem, which means they can cause interfere with someone breathing. Now, um, the opioids they have receptors in the brain also, and um, one of the areas that con we have one of the areas that controls your the breathing in the brain. Now, when someone overdoses on it, basically what they do is what they can just cut off. So the person is like the person just dies, just just stops breathing just like that because of an overdose on of this drug and a lot of times people who actually use this mps have studies have shown that they have high risk of other mental health issues so things like anxiety depression sleep problems and all of that there are a lot of it that are very very um, common with them and of course um some of them could actually have withdrawal effect, but uh, what happens is that, and that's why we usually advocate that when people are struggling with some of these substance abuse, they don't just stop on your own. No, you need to see um, uh, you are going to see a psychiatrist or you need to go to a hospital where you'll be guided on how to do it. Because a lot of times when people come to spaces like this, they don't understand that they are rehab. Um, there are rehab centers that deal with things like this. You don't just stop because of withdrawal symptoms. And we know withdrawal symptoms can actually be very, 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 very dangerous. Another one where we, we, we do see also is kidney damage. These things are drugs, right? And um, they are all filtered by the kidney. The kidney is the end product because whatever one takes, the kidney is the one that is going to excrete them. And some of them are what we call nephrotoxic. And nephrotoxic means they have the potential to damage the kidneys. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't know. And this, the NPSs in their various form can actually, um, can actually uh, predispose to, um, to damage of the kidneys. Now, a lot of them, like the opioids also, can actually damage a lot of organs, sorry. Um, one of the organs to the the cannabis, mean, apart apart from the kidneys, as I mentioned earlier, is the lungs. Now the lungs also are involved in in, in, in the, the lungs are involved in you know your breathing in and breathing out. And some of these things also can actually cause damage to the lungs. And the in all in all, you would see that um, there really is no benefit to the use of um, all of this drug. And I'm happy we're having a conversation like this because it's high time we young people need to know that we that trying to experiment thinking that we are beating the system is is not um it's not we're not beating the system at all we are just beating ourselves now um just to, so i also not made the i i i saying that we're going to have a lot of youth on this program so i try to like um um do um like a, a talk to my niger people to you know to find out some street names of some of these drugs because one thing that happens is that I try to like um, have a conversation around young people. I mean, do you know some of these things? So some people don't even know this because 
it, 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 on, on the level of the streets, they will not call it um, rape, no, and all of that. They will call it those street names. And it is those street names that you will find on the street. And it is those street names they use in music and all of that. And some people have actually been laced, they, they've had their drinks laced because they did not know some of these street names. So, I mean, if we have young people on this page, so I decided, I, I, I decided to compile a list of them, which I've just read briefly. So, they, some of the names are very funny. Well, Popular some some of these street drugs that we know, well everybody knows that one is called we popular rape not with times in date rape. So at parties, when you hear that um a girl was raped, the girls popularly you see young people you say, Oh, they roofie that. So roofies, that is where I'm one. Now there's another one that you know that go everyone who sees, you will hear song uh oh, but, but, moly, moly, yeah, moly, that's X day. See, that's a, a very, um, young people also. Um, well, probably two rates, uh, that is now what people are experimenting with. And a common name, if you go at the level of the street, is usually called downer. So when you say, oh, can I have like two sticks of, um, can I have some downers? I mean, that's what they will say. It's like, that's probably two rates. Um, well, cocaine crack, I think everyone knows that one. So called coke crack. And the funny one, Tramadol, I actually got to notice from people like, so when another street name for something like Tramadol is Young Papi, I don't know why they call it young puppy and trams. It's so when you hear trams, 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 that's tramadol. And then, well, I'm sure you've heard of umpuru meri methamphetamine, which is, I think, um, that is gaining an increased use in the southeast. And I think another person sent me a name that I think methamphetamine also goes with the name Insi Akawu. I'm not sure if I <laughs> pronounced it very very well. And then um, also someone sent the name for tramadol thing. They call it amadirate. I mean, that's the name someone sent to me. Well, shockingly, we actually seen the use of things like um, Irene, Irene also, but um, I think the nickname another person sent to me was Thailand. And well, various forms of synthetic cannabinoids, so from the Kush, Black Mamba, Lamba, Colorado, and Kulos, all of those things, Mamba, they are all forms of um, cannabinoids. And some of these things have actually been, um, you know, have actually been um, adulterated. Um, well, I got to know about Captain Cody, Little C, and Schoolboy um, being the nicknames for Codeine. And um, we're well, upper speed. For some reason, we have amphetamines on the streets. And um, amphetamine-like substance also are there. Um, well, yes, yeah, so those are like... Um, all in all, I've just tried to like give us an overview of, of MPS. And you agree with me that putting all of this together, apart from the health hazard it causes, it increases the risk of dying that's one two it also increases uh, it, it can increase the risk of unemployment it can increase the risk of uh, it can increase the risk of loss of working hours because if you have someone that is you know addicted and all of that it will manifest in their day-to-day -day live livelihood it will manifest in how they carry themselves and nobody want to employ such people and if you have some of these people having psychosis and they don't get help they become a menace to themselves and a menace to the society and we also know that when people also do, do um, um, involved in use of MPS, also it can cloud their judgment and it can also increase the risk of crimes increase the risk of rape and all rape and all the um, vices that we have in the society. So I think it's high time we spoke about this and let people know that they are help. It's it's a, it's a long line, even ending. And I like the fact that NGL is bringing this to you, you are bringing this to awareness because it was very shocking. I, I mean, I'd seen that. I thought it was not being done again. That people were sniffing um, toilets. Yes, people do that. People will buy a voice stick and start sniffing it. People sniff, um, you know, all sorts of things because there's this um, this um, thing of people want to get high. And so we need to, like, talk to ourselves and as young people and everyone here that we should spread the world out there because the way we are going to win this war against drug abuse, which NDLA have been doing very well, is if we work hand in hand in them, it is not, NDLA is not going to come to our house and everywhere to enforce all of this. We are the ones that need to tell people, if you're doing drugs, don't do drugs. And if you are addicted, um, just like um, Sir Fabi Baba Fabi just um, mentioned, there are outliers for you to seek for help. We should allow um, people to also um, seek for help. And as a young person, I look forward to a better Nigeria. Thank you very much. Hi, I wish um, 
you would um, hear the clapping of um, all of the people on this space this um, hot afternoon in the nation's um, capital, Abuja. Thank you very much, dear Dr. Shino Ajida, the bearded Dr. Shino. You always um, give a good account of yourself. And today, again, you never disappointed um, all of us, all of those um, listening um, to you, to us from all across the world, because here we know, as I can see on this space, we have people across um, the continent of the world. Um, I've seen people join us from Europe, from America, from Asia, from across Africa and every part of Nigeria. Let me quickly um, appreciate, um, we cannot mention everybody, but just permit me to quickly appreciate some of these people um, who are joining us from um, across the world, across Nigeria. Like I said before, uh, we do have a very senior committed member of this space, Dr. Abdullahi, who is um, a um, consultant psychiatrist at the Amadou Bello University in Hospital Zaria. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdullahi. We also have um, someone who has also been a part of this conversation. He's always been a part of this conversation, but he's been our guest also here before. And that is Dokita Ladega. Dr. Ladega, thank you very much for being part of this conversation today. We have um, Empress coming. We have um, Hawashitu. We have Larry of Lagos. We have pharmacist Oluoma. I, 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 I guess that I get that right. We have Oluwa Femi at Ayegusi 1234. Muraki of Kaya Day. Please um, let's remain muted so that um, we are not interfering. Or interrupting. Okay, we have Buraki Okayo Day, we have Iran Lady Mari, we have Neyo at um, Adeshina Neyo, we have Baba Bala Castina, we have AGN at um, AGN for Real, that's Abdul Ghani. Thank you, Abdul Ghani. There we have Isaiah Olumeko, we have um, Lewa Gold, thank you, every one of you. We have Oriaku at uh, Juliet Effie, we also have um, Shamu Yusuf Ozega. We have um, Riley at Riley's Quarter. Uh, I guess uh, Riley is joining us from across the Atlantic. Thank you, Riley, there for being part of the conversation today. Thank you, uh, Kendi, Philip, Eric Dishon. Uh, we also have um, on the space, that is um, UNODC in Nigeria, that's United uh, Nations Office on Drugs and Crime. Thank you, UNODC, there for being part of the conversation today. We have Dr. Malik Haruna King. Thank you, Dr. Um, Malik, for being part of the conversation today. Now we've got into the high point um, where we throw it open, and um, that is um, getting um, all of us on the space to interrogate the presentation by Dr. Shino and also make our own contributions or ask questions. Um, all of those are allowed from this time on to the end of the conversation and um, as usual i would like to give um, the first um, opportunity to um a senior member that is dr abdullah dr abdullah of the amadou Bello university teaching hospital dr abdullah it's um, a great pleasure to have you again with us starting uh, the new year uh, with this same stroke we appreciate all your support and all the time thank you very much dr abdullah please you have the mic now uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Femi, Baba Femi, and to all our listeners, the presenter. Happy New Year to all of us. Uh, I thought I wouldn't be able to make it today, but uh, thank God I was able to squeeze time to gain the presentation. Uh, I must commend the presenter for a presentation well taken. He did justice to it. Uh, I have very little to add other than the fact that these new psychoactive substances, like he said, they are a big threat to us even looking at it from the legislative point of view these are most of these substances are not the substances that have been covered uh, by our laws like a colleague was asking me uh, last week he said what do you do to a person who is just peacefully in front of his house sniffing his gutter and getting high what do you do you know so you begin to wonder oh, it, it, the, the, the kind of threat this thing is having on our youth and our society. 
because the rate at which these things are evolving, it appear our laws cannot even keep up. You know, I have a very young chap that was brought to me. This, 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 this young boy is just, I think, 23 year old. And already what we have seen is irreversible brain damage, irreversible lung damage. And what was he taking? He was sniffing jet fuel. Jet fuel. So some of these new psychoactive substances, like he said, it's not like the substances are just new. It's just that human beings have found a way to venture into what they you know, use them for purposes they are not meant for. And it is causing a lot of damage. You know, if only people have the opportunity to see what these people go through when they come to us, I think they will you know, think twice before they start taking these things. So it's good that we are, we are speaking about them. It's good that we are talking about them. Like I've always said, uh, talking about them here is just the beginning. At least let's take this message to our homes, our streets, our places of worship. Let this message get to the people that are really most vulnerable because a lot of them are not here with us. You know, so how do we take this message? NJL on its part is doing a lot, but like the presenter rightly said, they cannot do it alone. You know, we live with these people in our communities, we live with them in our streets, we go to worship centers with them and stuff like that. We really need to double our effort because this problem is huge, very huge. Like I, I, I was telling a friend, from what I am seeing, we are sitting on a time bomb. If we don't do something drastic about these issues of drugs, particularly these newer psychoactive substances, then in the nearest future, we will have youth that will take over the leadership in this country. There will be no youth left. It is a huge problem. And I think everybody needs to come together and contribute his or her own quota to seeing how this problem can be properly dealt with. Thank you very much once again for having me. And Happy New Year to all our listeners around the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Dr. Abdullahi. Um, like uh, Dr. Abdullah also wrapped it up by saying, if um, we all don't stand up um, to join this conversation, to join this fight against this um, substance abuse or against these illicit uh, substances, the youth we are looking forward as the leaders of tomorrow, by the time their opportunity comes, by the time tomorrow comes, there may not be the youth in place that was Zoom leadership. I think that, um, that's cogent, yeah, and that's... Um, uh, should be one of our takeaways uh, on this platform or this conversation today. Please let um, the agency is uh, stretching itself everywhere to do all that it needs to do. But like um, our guest lecturer and um, Dr. Abdullah also rightly said, we cannot do it all alone. That's why we have war against uh, drug abuse advocacy initiative to mobilize everybody to join this fight and. Um, Every one of us, we all have our spheres, areas of influence. Let's take this message there. And that's why we also try to make um, this conversation um, a recorded one so that we can all um, also share on our WhatsApp groups on our other platforms so that we can spread the message if, um, if um, our international partners are doing all they can to support this effort. I'm talking of... Um, all our um, law enforcement partners across the world and especially all the efforts being coordinated again by some of these international partners by uh, the UNODC here. So we all as um, citizens, as stakeholders in Nigeria here, we all need to rise up and um, take a step. And that is by joining, um, doing what we need to do at our own level. And I think Dr. Abdullah mentioned something that our uh, uh, current laws um, do not cover um, NPS, that's the new psychoactive source. I agree with him, but I, I also can also assure him that indeed um, there is another effort um, to amend the NDLA Act at the moment, and um, we believe that will be taken care of. I'm aware of that. Actually, that bill was passed last year, but unfortunately, 
um, it expired before presidential assent, and um, it's been reintroduced again this year. So we're hoping that um, um, our lawmakers and they are really indeed committed to it this time around. We've had um, enough I mean, conversations with them, and they are also well committed to passing this new bill so that. Um, this can be well covered and a lot of other grants. Okay, that, um, that okay, let's go. Okay, let me quickly ask, um, I'll come to you, Dr. Dimeji, shortly, but before I come to you, um, let me read this, Dr. Shina. Um, Adia, this is coming from uh, Shineta, I'm reading from uh, um, DM now. Are there any specific chemical properties that make new psychoactive substances more dangerous or addictive. Um, the second leg of um, her question is, how do NPS differ chemically from traditional or conventional drugs? That's for you, Dr. Shida. All right, thank you very, thank you very much for that question. So um, the first question is, are there specific um, chemical um, properties Sorry, are there specific chemical properties of NPS that makes them, um, well, I, okay, but to answer that, that is like, okay, you only need me to repeat yeah. that again. Yes, just yes. Okay, Can you repeat that, okay. Yeah? okay, are there um, any specific chemical properties that make new psychoactive substances that NPS more dangerous um, than more dangerous or more dangerous or addictive? The second part of that question is, how do NPS differ chemically from traditional conventional drugs? Okay, all right, thank you for that, sir. So, to answer the first one, it's not as if there are, like, specific properties that makes them more dangerous or more addictive. Just like I explained during the presentation, now, many of these drugs, the way it works is that many of them, you know, have target receptors. They work on organs, and they are like, they just work um, just the way drugs other ad drugs will work, so you understand. And just because while they are not um, um, drugs, 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 because it's, you know, every country has like a list of drugs that, um, a list of rules and, and drugs that guide what we call as hard drugs and all of that. So they are not in that category, but they have potential to also induce things like hallucination, psychosis, and all of that, and that is why people are experimenting with them. Let's take, for example, uh, someone that is um, sniffing gutters and sniffing toilets. Now, what are they sniffing there? Basically, they are getting high on ammonia. Now, is, are you going to say ammonia is a hard drug? No. Ammonia has um, various uses. I mean, ammonia is used in um, for cleaning agents, is used in the lab, is used to make um, industrial liquids, a lot of things. It has a lot of use. But the same ammonia, just because of how it is, it's because of the smell, it's pungent. You know, some people you can um, take... Um, can you know go to inhale it and all of that and um, feel a kind of high from it? And in the long run, many of these, like for example, ammonia can actually cause organ damages, like damages of the lung. But you would not say ammonia is, is itself that is is a hard drug. But it's just that it's used because of what it can do. People are now experimenting same way with the way people um, go to smell um, dirty toilets and all of that. They are trying to get high on the old pungent smell of all the gases, methane, you know, all of the um, all of the dangerous gases that are released from the decom decomposition. And another one I thought I should mention is some people live on. I've, I've, I've seen that once where the complaint was my child just likes to. So when the um, when the parents are like starting the car, the child just goes to the exhaust. Um, the exhaust pipe and it's just it just it just has this like ple pleasurable just derives pleasure from that well that one is even very dangerous because majority of the combustion it's that releases carbon monoxide which is a very deadly gas that can actually kill so some of these things can kill but will you say carbon monoxide is a hard drug no because carbon monoxide in itself actually even has industrial um actually has industrial use because that is what you use in your fire extinguisher now imagine somebody taking fire extinguisher and trying to to get high on fire extinguisher. Thank you. All right, thank you very much there, um, Dr. The bearded Dr. Shino. Okay, let me quickly um, acknowledge some other persons um, here. Um, okay, we have um, 
our own uh, patriotic camp camp. Thank you very much, patriotic camp camp. Uh, I was actually looking forward to having a conversation with you uh, this week, but it's been very busy here and there. Thank you, camp camp. Uh, camp camp is um, where I don't. I'm not seeing. I don't. Um, uh, your hand. Do, okay, I can see. I can see. I was looking for the patron there. Okay, camp patron. Thank you. Um, again, I have also seen Toby, then Aki Toby, Habiba, Adelecon, Daniel, Sky, and um, quite a lot of others. Please, just um, as time permits, I'll be coming to you to uh, appreciate some of those on the platform. We can't do it for everybody, but uh, those uh, we can cite quickly. I'll put down your name and greet you or acknowledge you there. Okay, that's why I'd like to have. Um, your contribution or question, Dr. Dimejat Avata. Thank you, Avata. Thank you very much, uh, sir, Mr. Babafemi. I'm most grateful. Happy New Year. I'm very happy to be here once again, sir. I'm at Sean, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, uh, my is a contribution. I have some um, contribution. Um, the contribution is that, um, according to UNODC, new psychoactive uh, substance uh, those that are out, those substances that are being formed new that were outside the um, convention that's the 1961 on narcotic and then the one on psychiatric substance. But the term new doesn't mean these substances are new, no, they've always been around. People just have access to them or new way of getting access to them. The more the agency keep um catching up on these new substances, the more they keep creating new ways or invention to get access to those active ingredients, those chemicals that uh, Dr. Dr. Belletino has mentioned, it, they are everywhere. But people keep getting new ways to get access to them. So it's not that these substances are really new, but they keep inventing new ways of adding A plus B to get this. And that's why it seems every time the agency tries to keep a stop on a particular uh, uh, psychoactive substance, you see there's a new one coming up because they are also devising ways of evading being caught, and also because of the, they are addicted to these substances. So those substances are not, are not necessarily new, but new forms and new ways to get access in them is what I think people are, are always uh, are, they are creating. That's uh, my contribution. Also, uh, I also want to add, because uh, Dr. Ablai mentioned that in future, we might not um, have um, leaders um, in the country again. I think... One of the side effects, one of the effects, this it might not be necessarily on earth, is that people who are addicted on these substances uh, tend to have lots of focus and go. I think that's the reason. And that's the more reason why we're trying to push more, and that's the more reason why um, our host, Mr. Rafem, is trying to make sure we create more awareness so that we can have a youth that are still goal and goal oriented on the future and the focus of the country. Then um, also, when it comes to loss of um, kidney damage and um, liver, the problem is that these drugs are being metabolized and destroyed. Any drug you take to your system is being metabolized and destroyed most, most times in the kidney and the liver. So when these new substances, people try to form, um, add one plus one to make them high, the liver and the kidney are not used. You overwork them in trying to break up these new substances, thereby you tend to damage these organs. And um, also, um, lastly, uh, to also add to uh, the contribution uh, to the classification of uh, psychoactive substance um, that uh, Dr. The other Dr. Shino gave, we also have unconventional um, substance because when you have a particular pattern, when you say people um, sniff latrine, um, purple leaf, zakamine, the north, acuscura, and the rest, it's because some of these uh, new substances don't have a particular um, straight for perfect well. Some of them combine multiple receptors, and that's why the damage are more. Because you think they are binding to one particular receptor, but these new substances are binding to multiple receptors in the brain. So the damage is more. Even winning them, winning them off this um, substance is more difficult because of the multiple receptors that have been um, involved also. Because I was watching a documentary sometimes in December on um, Sierra Leone, where their youths now did groups uh, to... Um, Save the bones from those uh, graves. It's not those dead bodies that have not been there, but they just create new way to have access to this uh, ammonia. Thank you very much, sir. I'm most grateful. All right, thank you very much, there, um, Abata. That's um, 
at no, the Meiji the Great One. All right, I think. Uh, okay, okay, we'll just stop. Okay, uh, okay. Okay, okay. 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 okay, let me help him. All right, now. Okay, um, Dr. Dimeji, let me go to um, our DM again. We have quite a lot on our DM, so that's why I didn't want you. I know um, Avatar is also a medical doctor, so I wouldn't want you to. And I think he, he was um, more or less. Um, saying what um, some of those things you already said okay let me take this from blessing that um there are a lot of sudden um okay there are a lot of studies on the, the way that the is that psychoactive substances i like other effects in relation to other diseases of chemicals as a result of this in I read again. Oh, you got you understood. So your voice was breaking. You were going on okay. and off. Oh, okay. Sorry, maybe it's that again the question. Um there are a lot of studies on the way that the brain Affected by these psychoactive substances, but can you highlight some of the other effects in relation to other diseases or other biochemical parameters as a result of these substances and the result in adverse in diabetic? Okay, you had me like we, okay. The question I don't really get the question. Hello, so is the person asking the effect of psychoactive substances on the brain and diseases, or because that's a lot of like um in in one in, in the statement? I think the question is I don't know it's um Hello, sir. I, I cannot hear you. Or oh, is it my, from my end? I can't really hear you. Okay, but can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you now. I was not hearing you before. I think there's a network glitch from your end. But I think the first part of the question is the person asking on effect of psychoactive substances on the brain. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. But well, I'm saying the question the person is asking, is the person asking yes. the effect of psychoactive okay, substances on the brain? Is that what the person is asking about? Because there was a lot of, um, um, I saw in the question, is the person yes, asking? Please. Yes, Okay, 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 all right. So, um, well, if you talk about the effect of psychoactive substances in the brain, um, usually a lot of times the manifestations um, actually, um, I effect of brain functions. So um, it can start from a, the functioning of the brain first. Like the person can have um, well, problems with concentration. Person can have personality changes. Um, you can see the person is having this some form of disinhibition. So some you know in a normal day there are some things that um, you do you would you would not want to do. For example, now maybe one parent speaks to them. Inhibition normally you would not, and maybe if you are annoyed with your parents, you will slap your parents. That's you have some form of inhibition. I mean, many of these drugs can ha can cause lack of inhibition. Imagine the person talking to the parent and just gives, gives the person a slap, angry outburst, um, aggression, and some form of irritability. Many of these can actually even tip the um, some of these drugs can actually tip the person to having um. Um, some form of psychotic disorders. We know that, that uh, use of psychoactive substances can actually um, tip someone to all of that. And also mood problems, sleep problems, and all. Uh, these are all the spectrum. And it can also affect the person's personality. So you can have the person having personality changes, which we then also can 
transfer in um, the relations with day-to-day -day, uh, effects and all of that. Now, I don't know if the person also asked, asking, asking what diseases are associated with psychoactive drug use, because I heard something like that in the question. Yes, is um, is asking. Um, but can you highlight some of the other effects in relation to other diseases or other biochemical parameters as a result of these substances and the resulting adverse effects, like in diabetics? <laughs> okay, okay, that, that's it. I don't really. I, I'm not sure what the person is trying to ask, but I think the person is trying to ask, like, is it like if. A diabetic patient is taking drugs. Okay, let me just give an overview. So, yeah, wow. Well, if the person takes the drugs up to a level that the person has, say, liver damage and all of that, well, there are there are ways we know when someone has liver damage, the person can start having jaundice, the person can start having swollen tummy, swollen legs, and all of that. And well, the kidneys also, if the kidneys get um, damaged, the person can have puffy skin, not maybe, maybe not making enough urine or make or not making adequate urine. And um, also, we also have some chemical changes you, 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 in the in, in the blood. So it's, uh, uh, something that we call hyper hypokalemia. Now, potassium is one of the very important. Um, um, electrolyte. I, I've tried not to use medical word electrolytes in the blood. So many of Many of these can actually tip someone to having um, hyperkalemia, hypokalemia. They can distort all of the other um, electrolytes in the body. So we have other things like potassium, chloride, and all of that. And um, yes, yeah, so I don't think anyone that has diabetic should actually be um, should actually experiment with using using drugs. So I'm, I hope I answered the person's um, question. Thank you. All right, thank you very much there. I think uh, we also have um, Dr. Abdullah who also like to contribute to this. Dr. Abdullah, please go ahead. Uh, okay, thank you once again. Uh, thank you, the presenter, for rising to the occasion. I think whoever has that question may have some uh, background of uh, medicine or the basic uh, sciences. Uh, of course, Psychoactive substances, apart from their effect on the brain, can also have effect on every other organ in the body. Every other organ in the body. All right? And I'm sure the presenter had you know, spoken about some of the changes that can happen in the brain. And even in our previous discussions, these are things that have always come up over and over again. How uh, uh, neurotransmitters can get imbalance, how some of them can get depleted, like you can have depletion of acetylcholine, you can have depletion of uh, uh, serotonin, dopamine, all those things leading to certain complications in respect of the brain. For example, Parkinsonism, for somebody who is using cocaine or other forms of uh, uh, substances that, are, that have similar chemistry to uh, cocaine can develop Parkinsonism due to the depletion of the acetylcholine in the in the brain. Now, what are some of the biochemical changes like the person acts that, that we can see in other organs? For example, a lot of these chemicals are metabolized by the liver. So they can cause damage to the liver. And when the liver is damaged, of course, you are going to have derangement in the liver function. Eh? The LFTs will be deranged. And there are so many of them when we do liver function tests. When you do liver function, you see all of them are deranged, telling you that there is a liver damage. Most of these substances too are also excreted. That is, they are they, they, they usually get the body usually get rid of them through the kidney. Kidneys is the major organ of excretion. So as a result of that, the kidney can also get damaged, and you can have deranged kidney function. Uh, your electrolytes, you know, your uh, your urea, your uh, creatinine, all these things can be deranged, you know. So also with any other part of the of the body. For example, somebody who takes a, uh, a psychoactive substance that happens to damage the the islet of the pancreas can develop a type two diabetes because the uh, the, the islet are responsible for production of insulin. And once they are damaged, the person will no longer be able to metabolize glucose very well. And that person can develop diabetes. So when we say drugs and other substances, they not, they not only damage the brain. They cause damage to every single organ 
you can think of in the body. Every organ. So that is what it is. Uh, so they, it, it is better to just stay off these drugs. If you are going to discuss the damage they cause, you if we take the whole day, you will not be able to finish it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, dear uh, Dr. Abdullah, for speaking to the matter again. If uh, we have to start discussing the consequences or the effects of these drugs on the organs of the body, we can go on and on. That's what Dr. Abdullah has just concluded with there. And um, the only way out to avoid all of this and stay alive is to abstain totally from these illicit substances. That's exactly the message we are trying to get across to our youths, especially those who abuse these illicit substances. Now, I come to our DM again. There is another interesting one here, um, Dr. Um, Shino. Um, Ash K is asking us, I don't know how true this is. I heard from my doctor this morning that they are robbing graves. That is um, the incident you mentioned, even though that's outside of the country, but then uh, it's something that uh, was trending last week or you know, last two weeks. Um, that they are robbing graves, meaning they are digging um, graves for bones, which they grind and mix with substances. I think... Um, uh, Ashke is trying to ask, is this true? How does this affect human health? I think um, the floor is also open to you, and I'm sure Dr. Abdullah can contribute to this after Dr. Shina has made his points. All right, so thank you for that question. Well, just like you've heard, I also heard it also, and we watched it. And uh, yes, it's true that um, I've not seen it, but I've seen it on TV and read news about it that they are exhuming bones, cups, and well, I really don't know what they plan to do with it. Maybe they want to grind it and sniff it, or I, I really don't know. So I can't really say much about that, but it's all bothers around the fact that people are trying to do different things and experimenting new levels of getting high. So probably the day one of them is arrested, because I don't think I've seen any arrests made made and then um, they were asked like what exactly uh, do you guys do to the, with, with the bones and all of that where did till then we might not really ha I, I i might not have an answer to what exactly they do with those bones but yes some people are exhuming bones and um well i don't really i can't really say what they are doing with the bones to get eye so i'll just leave it at that thank you all right dr abdullah would you want to say something to that yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, a, a colleague, a psychiatrist who works in uh, Sierra Leone, actually was interviewed on this issue, and he confirmed uh, uh, what we saw in the video. You know, and uh, the reason for using those bones is not far fetched. Bones are very rich in sulfur. You know, and sulfur is one of the substances that can cause. Uh, you know, the feeling of high or stuff like that. So when they grind it and mix it in uh, whatever substance they are taking, it tend to potentiate the, 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 the effect and the action. So they, they, they get, uh, uh, you know, the effect get potentiated, they feel, you know, high, you know, and stuff like that. So that that's what is actually happening. He did confirm it, and uh, they are having a lot of crisis at the moment. Uh, and I think uh, we are hoping and praying that uh, we won't get to that point, you know. But of course, uh, I don't know how to translate this uh, house proverb into English. Our uh, people say when you when when the beard when the beard of your neighbor catches fire, you try to wet your own, you know, before your own too will catch fire. So Sierra Leone is a neighbor, you know. Uh, and if they are having such crisis on their hand, then we should be able to take steps to ensure that we don't get that kind of crisis in our own hands. But it is actually happening. And uh, it is scary. The trajectory we are taking the youth, not just in Nigeria, across the continent and across the world. And a lot needs to be done. It's not everything you copy. And I think one of the... Uh, the problems we are having is our tendency to copy, and we copy almost everything bad. 
So, but I think it is time for us to to really intensify our advocacy, you know, so that we can uh, educate these youth even before they are miseducated by uh, these bad elements among us. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, there, Dr. Abdullah. Let me also let me still go back to our DM. Quite a lot on our DM and our DM today. Um, the first question here. Um, actually has um, some portions that had to do with um, already what has what was asked by Shineta and um, adequately responded to them. But let me just ask, because of the latter part of the question, how does the chemical composition of these substances differ from traditional drugs? And what challenges does, what challenges do, they, do this pose for regulation and control? I think we have discussed that. Um, well, for Dr. Shina or Dr. Abdullah, anybody that may want to respond to that, but let me go to uh, some of the, uh, I'm, I'm skipping some of the questions that were already answered. Um, okay, let me read this one. Are there any advancements or challenges in forensic chemistry that influence the detection and identification of new psychoactive substances? Okay, Dr. Shina. Please, um, is there anyone you want to respond to this? Um, okay, I'll just, I'll just um, make it on the first one. So um, as you said earlier that there are new rules to capture more um, more drugs so that the bill has been passed. So I think that answered the first part. So hopefully as we, as we await the amendment of the bill, the scope of um, what we categorize as drugs will probably be expanded. So I think that answered it. I think it has been answered. Well, advancement in forensic chemistry. Well, one thing we know is that, yes, there are tests that can be done to detect um, a lot of these um, psychoactive um, substances if they are present in the blood. For example, if one overdoses on them and, you know, they are brought to a hospital, I mean, you can have from urine toxicology samples, blood samples. Yes, these are all things that can be done to detect um, some of these samples. So yes, there are um, yes, there are tests that can be done. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Dr. Abdullah, you have something to contribute to that? Uh, yes. Uh, for, for us in clinical practice, it is, it is a huge challenge because when we say new psychoactive substances, uh, for example, we have test strips. You know, they have different panels. Each test strip is designed to detect certain psychoactive substances. Now, a lot of these newer psychoactive substances that are being used, the panels we have are not designed to detect them. Now, as a clinician, how do patients present to you? Usually in an emergency situation, they may come with what? Intoxication. You know, somebody has taken an overdose of that substance, the person is right be before you, is a matter of life or death. You need to know what is it this person took before you can intervene. You can't treat what you don't know. So the problem we have is what? Usually you are unable to detect this thing because the panels you have are not designed to detect those newer psychoactive substances. And even if at all you eventually find out what it is, sometimes it is usually too late. You know? So each substance has its antidote. When you take overdose, what do you give? What do you do? But of course, you need to know what it is so that you will know what to give. Now, this person has taken something that is completely out of the books. You don't, you don't know what it is, you know? And the person perhaps is not even conscious to tell you what he took. So you are left at the mercy of the test, the various toxicology tests you are going to do to know what this, pe this person relate to. And then you do your, you use your test kits, you test the urine or you test the blood, and it is not showing you what is in the, in the, in the, in the, in the individual system. You understand? Because the test panel, they, they, were, they were never envisaged that these people would begin to sniff uh, the, 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 the heat of a lizard. They were never envisaging that people would begin to sniff jet, jet, jet fuel or stuff like that. So the post panels are not made for that. So 
now that they are becoming a big problem, most likely going forward, we are, we are going to begin to have test kits with panels that can detect some of these things. But for now, it's a huge challenge. And that is the risk individuals take when they take these substances. Because when we are taken to hospital, they may not be able to help you. Because if they don't know what the problem is, it's just to manage you in a, in a, in a kind of palliative way and hope that you survive. But they may not know what you took and they may not be able to give you any antidote. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Just right. hold on there, Dr. Abdullah. Somebody is responding to um, what you just said now, and the person is Sorry, asking... Sir. Okay, Dr. Shinan. Okay, I want just wanted to, to add something, just, just to okay, what Dr. Abdullah said. Um, if, and, and that's why we, we usually advocate that if maybe you find someone unconscious or something and you suspect the person has taken something if you find any empty bottle around or maybe a canister or a canister or just bring it along to the hospital because sometimes those bottles or whatever you find around the person can actually help um the medical team to actually think about what happened for example maybe one just you know just you know just took something that went unconscious and you know when they are falling down you can still see like uh, maybe some of the liquid on the floor and the bottle opened it's actually good that people should always take those bottles don't just discard and throw everything away take those bottles with you while you're taking the person to the hospital because it can actually influence how the medical team think or why they are waiting for definitive results i just wanted to add that thank you sir all right thank you there uh, dr shino Okay, uh, this person is asking a very quick one. Um, traditionally, from where I come from, um, our parents used to give uh, people that have uh, reactions to some of these uh, overdoses or intoxication red oil to drink, and it has always worked are you saying that all of those uh, don't work again i need that i need dr abdullah to clarify this please dr abdullah this is a direct question to what you said uh, okay uh, for example if i may ask that person if you see somebody who has taken an overdose of cocaine and you give that person red oil uh, what do you think is going to happen in fact, the red oil may even kill the person faster because this person is unconscious. You are giving that person oil by more. The person can aspirate. Hmm? The person can aspirate. What is aspirate means to bring back the content of the stomach into the airway, into the nose and the lungs. All right? So uh, red oil is not an antidote for uh, psychoactive substances. Uh, that's the uh, short answer. Each substance have its own antidote you know just like a snake venom uh, when the snake bites a person you try to identify the snake and then give the antidote for that particular snake but if you go and give that person red oil uh, you are not going to be helping much you know so that's that that is the basic uh, the basic truth thank you Thank you very much, there, Dr. Abdullah. Okay, uh, we have, um, okay, thank you, Oluwa Tozi Ronke, for being part of this conversation. Ali Uzma, thank you. Apotio Solomon, thank you. Okay, at that point, I'd like to uh, pass the mic to Apotio Solomon. You have a question or a contribution, please go ahead and do that uh, in a few seconds. Apotio Solomon, please go ahead. Uh, or else I'll pass the mic to Wuwa Ika. Okay, Wuwa Ika, please go ahead. Let's hear from you. Uh, I have um, my DM bubbling. Okay, um, let me go to our DM there. Uh, I guess uh, they are struggling with their network because I can see. Um, Okay, let me have, okay, I, I believe um, Dr. Shina, and uh, because this person is uh, addressing healthcare professionals generally. Okay, how can healthcare professionals effectively respond to cases involving the use of these substances considering the unique uh, challenges they may pose? I believe you have also spoken about this, but maybe you may have to communicate this so that... Um, Dr. Shina, please, did you get that? Mm -hmm. How can healthcare professionals? Okay. 
well. So I'm not, I don't know if the person is asking our role in awareness or our role when people overdose. So I'll just try to answer briefly in those two ways. So, um, well, our role in awareness, like we're doing, healthcare practitioners are engaging the public because we know that we need to enlighten the public about the meanings and how psychoactive substances use are a big threat to health and a big threat to life. And um, as we said, we don't expect NDLA to be the only one that is going to, you know, bring this awareness at the grassroots level with us to do with all of us. And I think what we can do more is um, public-private partnership. Let's partner with health influencers and let's put it up out there so that we can have more awareness about this. If the, the second part of the question, if the person was asking about our response to um, what doctors, healthcare workers can do in response to when someone overdoses on that. Well, I would say first is you rush the person to a hospital because there's little you can do. And I would say avoid the use of things like palm oil, red oil, or any of all of this on orthodoxy because you can actually worsen the presentation. You don't bother yourself. You just get the person in the quickest, safest, fastest way possible to a hospital and let the medical practitioners take it over from there. Thank you. And what just to mention is that a lot of time when people have addiction problems and drug use problems, they should be open to enrolling in rehabilitation centers. And I think um, we're doing a good job by talking about this because the more we destigmatize mental health issues and including drug use issues, we will um, allow uh, people that are um, struggling with drug use to come out to, and to enroll in uh, in rehabilitation centers so they can get better. So it's good we're having conversations like this. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Shino. I, we have um, Hawashitu. I believe Hawashitu is also um, a medical doctor, but let's, uh, I'll prefer she say it with um her mouth, I can only guess, but then Dr. Hawashi, to please go ahead and mute yourself. Let's hear your contribution or question. Um, hello, good day, everyone. I hope I'm clear enough. You are loud and clear, and uh, okay. we're hearing you from all parts of the world. Okay, that is great. So, um, actually, I would just uh, like to add a few things, but one of the major things I wanted to add about, so Shishina has already just mentioned about it, about uh, the NDLA not being the only person, like the only uh, body that is going to work towards this thing. This, this is basically like a, a major public health challenge. This is big. This is bigger than just one organization. So uh, there is a statement as well. So um, before that, I'd like to introduce myself. Um, I'm called Dr. Hawa Shitu. Yes, I'm a surgical resident. So um, Dr. Abdullah made a statement earlier about uh, this drug is going to take over and will not have youth left, which is true. And then, but if you ask, we all ask ourselves, why youth? Why is it youth? This thing actually is not only just on youth, because me personally, as a doctor, I have lost almost like four colleagues in a period of two months to drug use. And you can't tell me that these people don't know the side effects, the, the implications of using these things. And these people are actually anesthesiologists and anesthesia residents. So there is nobody that knows the effect of these psychoactive drugs more than these people. Because basically these people are the ones that actually administer all sorts of uh, anesthetic agents. So why, why is it rampant on, on youths? When we look at this, when we pick just uh, the word youths for an example, you see, there are cases of domestic abuses. Why, why are they so into this? Yes, there is case of domestic abuses, there is case of depression, there is case of trauma, mental health condition, a lot of socioeconomic deprivation, there is homelessness, and there is one major thing, unemployment. So this is not just something for one body. And then if we go back to uh, NDLA as well, what is the law on these drugs? Yes, what are the law over, uh, over these drugs? Some of these psychoactive drugs are just over the counter and it's easily accessible. So what exactly is the law? Just like Dr. Shina has mentioned before, like you can basically just step into a pharmacy and, and get tramadol. Tramadol is a control substance, yeah? And then also, this, um, what, just, when we just, uh, just we, we go far ahead in this thing, what are the basic things we need to do? 
about this situation. Yes, because first, the first thing is when you block this hole, these people will find another loophole. They will find another way to get access to this drug because this is addiction. This is addiction. It's beyond just the word addiction, and it's beyond just sitting and understanding it in one day. Addiction is, it's addiction is something very big because there is no when someone is addicted you can't just tell them avoid this drug or just stay away from this or avoid this and this. it's not going to work what are you going to do about it yes so what can be done first thing first is awareness 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 we have to this awareness has to literally be everywhere. It should be on TVs, it should be on radios, all social media platforms, everywhere, on billboards, what, schools, everywhere. Awareness has to be there about the use of these drugs. And secondly, like what I mentioned prior, control. How are these things controlled? Because even if, if they use, um, even if they find a way, because we just see these are new uh, psychoactive drugs, they are there before, they are not just new. This is just like adding one plus two, mix this and this, and then it gives you this. So control. How do we control what they will add to whatever they will mix to get a certain effect or to get a similar effect of what they can't get? Yes? Then number three, very important, support group. Support group, it's very helpful. Because in support group, you, you will find help there to avoid triggers. Uh, there are a lot of things that that is done in support groups and it's going to help these people, yes? And then rehabilitation and destigmatization. This is very important. We need to have more rehabilitation centers. We need to destigmatize people who are using uh, these substances because once you, you stigmatize someone about using such substance, but then let's say, for example, someone ahead of you, you know, someone ahead of you is using it, someone below you is using it, a child, is exposed because maybe the, the the siblings or the caregiver or the parents are using such substances and a child is exposed to an environment with the use of such substances adolescents are exposed adults old age everywhere it's it's general it's general so if even healthcare workers the healthcare givers are using so, such substances how about now someone who doesn't have knowledge on the effects and complications of such things. So um, that's just uh, basically what I wanted to add on. Awareness, control, support group, and more rehabli uh, rehabilitation centers and the stigmatization of this issue. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, dear Dr. Hawa, Dr. Hawa Shitu. Um, we appreciate your contribution. I'm sure that um, she's also introduced some um, Okay, we have Dr. Dr. Abdullah would like to speak to some of the points raised or add to some of the points already raised by Dr. Hawande. Dr. Abdullah, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Hawa, for joining us on this uh, program. Uh, yeah, what you said is, uh, is largely true, but of course, uh, we often emphasize on the youth because when you look at the epidemiology, look at the social demographic data the majority of people who use these drugs are youth you know they take up a larger percentage of people who use the drugs and we know they are the biggest challenge when it comes to the use of substances that is why the emphasis usually is on drugs you know that is, is on the youth that is one now, of course, if you look at among across all categories of professionals, medical personnel are more likely to use substance compared to other professionals. And the reason is not far fetched proximity, access. You understand? They have access to the substances and they work with those substances. So, among all professionals, if you look at the statistics, medical professionals are by far more likely to use substances. The same thing when we talk of suicide. Among all professionals, the professionals that are more likely to commit suicide are what? The medical professionals. Why? They have, they have access 
to lethal substances, and they have the knowledge, the know-how on how to take their lives. That is the reason. Of course, we have had colleagues, a lot of colleagues, who have fallen victims of these substances. And on this platform, we have talked about it several, that substance use is not just a moral issue. It's a disease of the brain. And anybody can be a victim. And that, and that is why our, our slogan is what? You are better off staying clear of drugs because you may have the vulnerability. That one trial may be enough to take you down the road you will never be able to come back from. So it is better left alone. Substances are better left alone. Don't even try it. All right? And for those who have gone ahead to try it and have, it has become a problem for them, we say what? The society should be able to provide help for them in the form of what? Rehabilitation. And just like you said, destigmatization. You know? And I used to mention something. The worst form of stigma against drugs and even mental illnesses I have witnessed are among healthcare providers. All right? And you'll be surprised at that. Even among our colleagues, you know, I'm sure you, you say you're a surgical resident, you know what I'm talking about. When these issues come up, in fact, people can say in the form of joke. But the worst form of stigma that I have seen against people who use substance and people with mental illness come from even the, 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 our colleagues, the healthcare providers. You understand? So these are problems that, uh, that, 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 that goes beyond what we can think of. But of course, what we are doing is to create the awareness. If we are able to solve this problem among our youth, largely, largely, we will have really taken care of this problem largely. Of course, we are not saying it's only youth that use it, but statistically worldwide, more than 90% of people who use drugs are youth, are within the, you know, young people, young people. All right? And sometimes I don't want, I, I know, yeah, unemployment is an issue. But like I tell people, majority of people who use drugs, at what age do they start? Majority of them will start at 15 or below 15. At that age, are you expecting the person to be working? No. So it wasn't unemployment that, that, that is actually the reason. I think the problem we are having with substance use, the major problem we are having with substance use is the breakdown of our family system, the breakdown of our values. You know? I'm not very old, but I can remember as a kid, if somebody was to see me when I was, I, I, I know, uh, growing up as a child, if somebody was to see me smoking cigarettes, the person don't need to know from which house I come from. I can tell you the person will discipline you and take you home and go report you to your parents. But this is the who do that. Even if somebody, you see a child taking substance or smoking, you go and tell the, 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 the parents and they will turn to, some, to something else. You know? You want to embarrass the family, you want to... So these are the things. Yes, unemployment is an issue. But majority of people who go into drugs start the use of drugs even before they attain the age where they are supposed to be working. So I think we need to do more as a society. If we are able to retrace our steps and get back our family system, our values as people, where a child is the child of the community, the entire community look out for the children and make sure that they do the right thing. Then I think we will be heading somewhere. Thank you. I don't let me, let me not take all our time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Abdullahi. There, yeah. um, interesting contributions. Um, I can see the passion. I can see um, uh, how really uh, sentimental we're about this issue. I think um, definitely when we continue like this, we would uh, continue to hit the right buttons there. Okay, let's um, again, uh, I think the last set of people I would like to acknowledge uh, today because we have barely 
six minutes more before I think there is one important question in our DM that I would like to ask and on that note we'll be wrapping up and um, but then before I get to that um, I think I've also seen another medical practitioner um, on the space but this time um, th that is Tinuka Ido she's joining us from Maryland US thank you very much uh, Tinuka for finding time to be part of the conversation today i know uh, the time difference but then you still try to be a part of this thank you tk uh i've also seen tj and um again i've seen uh, john ogujimi because john ogujimi is a regular senior member of this platform also we've also seen a digital royal highness digital royal highness your highness we appreciate um your presence also elipopsy elipopsy thank you for being part of this uh jaden foley farm farmer hub adam at uh dimeji ganil uh thank you everyone for this for being part of this conversation today it's interesting okay let me quickly uh take this last one i think um would uh, definitely anyone can contribute to this i think it's very important we all this is a question that um uh, bothers about um our own role as individuals as communities stakeholders whoever you may be now the question is um as a community how can we collectively contribute to spreading awareness and promoting responsible behavior regarding the use of psychoactive substances Dr. Dimeji, I mean, sorry, Dr. Shino, let's start from you before we come back for you to wrap up. As a community, how can we collectively contribute to spread it? Because, you know, you see people talking about, um, okay, what's the NDLA doing about it? I will keep saying, yes, we do our part, we do all we can, but then this is beyond NDLA, as has been acknowledged by a lot of us on the platform today. So this person asking this question seems to be... Uh, within the space of what uh, we keep telling people as a community, how can we collectively contribute to spreading awareness and promoting responsible behavior regarding the use of psychoactive substances? Please go ahead. All right, sir. Good afternoon, everyone, once again. So um, I think it's very, very important we have this conversation because as we've, we've earlier said, we cannot win this war. So at community level, I think the first thing I suggest is awareness. And um, awareness is going to be just like we are doing like this now. We should continue doing that. We need to have more spaces like this. Outside Twitter, we need to do more of this on Instagram, because an average youth spends probably like 80% or 70% of their days on social media, which means we need to capitalize on social media to be able to spread the news. Uh, we also need to do fine prints. Let's go to schools. Let's organize campaigns. Let's catch them young because no drug user starts like at an old age. All these things, you would have seen it maybe on TV and people start to experiment at parties and and all of that. So we need to spread the word to young children. Let's go to universities. Let's have campus ambassadors for drug um, against drug abuse. And another thing I would always maintain is also we need to censor our music and the entertainment industry because a lot of these drugs and and all are used there. And um, I believe young people are impressionable, and we need to talk more about all of this. And um, we need to be able to gets it out there that um, you uh, celebrities are like opinion um, and non opinion shapers and we need you to be able to you know do the right thing so that you don't make the um, wrong impression on young people then uh, I feel like it's a, it's going to be like a good one if, if we start with that and uh, we should also partner with by public-private partnership, because we cannot expect NDLA and only public organizations to do all of this. We need to work hand in hand together. Uh, well, I'll say we should also invest more maybe in rehabilitation homes, because I'm seeing a future where the world, the future might be psychotic, because if we don't nip this in the board, I'm seeing that um, future where we might have more people roaming on the streets if we don't do something about it. But I hope we don't. We don't get to that. And also, well, control of um, 
um, use of all of these drugs. Let us have stricter control. I see no reason why tramadol that should be a very um, strictly controlled drug should be available for 100 naira on the road. So these are issues we need to talk about. We also need to um, let people that have been rehabilitated tell their stories, encourage people, and let's remove all that stigma from, um, you know, so that people can become more open. So I think um, at every level, yes, another very important thing too, let's also partner with um, religious houses. Really, Nigerians are very religious people. They, they'll probably listen to their pastors before their doctors. So let us partner with churches also. Let them also talk about this. Let's have them on the altar, whether it's pastors, the Muslims, the traditional homes, every um, religious institution, let's just have them also wage war against drug abuse. And I feel that if we do that, we might be heading to um, a drug-free Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that last take there, Dr. Shino. Uh, yeah, there, Dr. Shino. Uh, Dr. Hawa, would you like to say something as your last take on this particular one before I come to Dr. Abilai? Dr. Hawa? Okay, let me, uh, I guess she's at work, she's busy. Thank you very much, Dr. Hawa, for being part of this conversation today. Okay, let's wrap it up with... Um, the last uh, the uh, take from uh, Dr. Abdullah on this particular question. Uh, thank, thank you once again. Like uh, Dr. Shina have uh, rightly said, we should uh, make this issue an issue that is so important. Let's 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 take it to the basic level. Let families families should be able to discuss what drugs are the problems associated with drugs families at the basic family level people should be able to feel comfortable educating their kids about family you know and at full of the community hello are you with me please yeah we can yes, hear sir. you please yes, sir Like they said, put it in our places of worship. It should form part of our families in the churches, in the mocks, you know, in our our community. Should be able to organize engagement. Let 